Hi, I'm Dan with Honeymooners Off-Road Adventures. Uh, we've had quite a few requests lately about a walk around of our trailer. It's definitely a very unique trailer. It's a trailer that I designed and built myself in our garage. Um, we're about 7,200 bucks into this whole thing, do it ourselves. And of course this took, you know, a, like about a year roughly to build. Let's go, let's go, take it to the top And we don't stop, cause it's now Just starting with the very front of this trailer, um, I have the lock and roll hitch. It's a six-way pivoting hitch on it. You can find it on Amazon for about 250 bucks. Um, and then I have these that I bought from Harbor Freight. This basically will lock this in so it doesn't have the slop up and down. So basically there is no movement outside of the pivot points on my hitch, which is really nice for four-wheeling, uh, especially when you get into some technical stuff. You don't want that slop that's going to throw you over or prevent you from climbing or whatever it is that you're going. Uh, moving back, I have 10 gallons of fuel for the Jeep for extended range. I have a 20 gallon propane tank that feeds our cooktop stove and we actually have an oven too which you'll see a little bit later and we have a hot water on demand that this feeds. Uh, moving up from there as you can see we have solar panels. Uh, this here is 200 watt on it. I have a pivot point here where it can swing out this way and point that way and there's a pivot point in the back over there that will cause it to swing out this way and then as you can see within the zoom in there's that arm in the back there I can adjust that for the angle if I need to adjust the angle of it um, and then on top of that I've also got uh, 400 extra uh, portable solar panels that I can plug into this system it's a plug-and-play system so if I ever need more uh, this currently houses pretty much all of our needs right now, but then when it's cloudy or very cloudy, it doesn't quite produce everything that we need, and so I have these extra panels to also add in there. I'll do a video a little bit later. I'll put the link in below for you. And uh, so moving on into the kitchen side. All right. So then moving around, um, as you can see, we have a uh, OBS 270 degree awning. This thing is like worth every penny. I think it costs us like 15 or 1600 bucks on sale. And it also came with the wall kit on it. That, yeah, as you can see, I, we do have wall number two up currently. Uh, it's been nice and hot out, so we haven't really needed it. But due to the wind, we went ahead and put up wall one because or wall kit two because of the wind coming in from that direction there. Um, we have had all of the walls on and have this totally closed off. Uh, just recently actually when we were at the King of the Hammers in January and, and first part of February of, of 2022 because it was so cold and then we run our fire pit inside we have a propane fire pit that we run inside and that heats everything up makes it kind of nice to talk and you know with friends and cook around it so over here we have the kitchen uh, we went with the the used shape uh, that's what most women like to cook with um, we have a, a little countertop right here that you can cut off of, or as currently we have dishes drying on it. We have a full size 16 by 18 by 9 inch deep sink um, with our faucet. It's a pull out so you can actually take showers or wash your hair or, or whatever you want to rinse off. We do have hot water on demand, a 15 gallon water tank on that. Uh, moving over this way, you can see right here we have our control panel. Um, I used to have these two here because I had actuators on there to raise and lower the tent. However, uh, due to Montana weather, that did not work out well. Uh, and then I've got, this is a switch for our water pump. Uh, we have a CD player slash radio. That's what that one's for. This one here powers our diesel heater and gives us power to our rooftop tent. Um, this one here, uh, we used to have lights out on the awning. That's That was always kind of cool because it would shift multiple colors and beat to the music that was fun but we swapped awnings and so we don't have that anymore um, this one here is the lights for right here for kitchen lights and then this switch here will actually give us lights within the storage which we'll get into late, a little bit later and then we have a spot here um, where currently we have like spices and some of our kitchen utensils held within there 
Um, right here we have a 95 Dometic uh, fridge freezer. Uh, it's worth every penny. I think we spent like 950 bucks at the time when we bought it, and that was like three years ago. Uh, this right here is definitely a must. I don't see this on any sort of uh, overland trailer whatsoever. This cost us about $200. It's a Camp Chef. Um, we have dual burners. This is 7,000 BDUs each. Uh, I think there is a newer one now where they're 9,000. And then we also have an oven. So you can fit a 9 by 13 uh, up, or, you know, tray in there nice and easily. And that thing's been very nice. You know, it's nice having more muffins in the morning or cinnamon rolls or maybe even do up some pizzas in the late afternoon. You know, it, it's definitely been kind of a cool thing to have on board. Um, all right, so then also right here we have a shift pod. Uh, I do have another video out if you want to look at our, our channel there. There's a shift pod video out there. This one here actually is a brand new one to us. Um, my video is on the shift pod XL. And that one is 14 foot by 14 foot by 7.5 foot in the, in the ceiling. And it takes me less than two minutes to set up and to tear down. It is an awesome piece of equipment. Um, this one here is 12 by 12, roughly just a little bit shorter. Uh, and I think it's 6.5 feet. Uh, so please check out that video also uh, for shift pod. Uh, and then as you can see walking back in here we have plenty of room in, in here with the awning kind of you know we have our little propane fire pit and whatnot and set up. You know as far as a, a size out basically from the trailer to where the wall kit meets the, the ground there is almost 12 feet right there. So we got lots of space in here. All right, now moving to the back. Um, so I have hardwired in up here. It, look, it looks like it's a 110, but it's not. That's actually a 12 volt DC. Um, I do have an inverter. I have two different inverters. I've learned a lot about inverters on, on this track. Originally, we started off with a 2000 watt inverter and it was just too much and it would drain the batteries down. I went to this 400 and I can run this puppy all day just off of the 200 uh, watt solar will power everything in this trailer non-stop. Um, we do have extra solar panels for those rainy, nasty weeks. But, I mean, we've gone five days without having to charge, um, without good sun. And then with good sun, it's we have unlimited power. All right, so moving in to our storage area here. Uh, a little bit messy. So right here we have a five-gallon Lifesaver. Um, and basically I can pull out of a creek, river, whatever, and it'll filter the water. So this is where we get our actual drinking water from. Um, we can also use it to fill up the trailer too if we need to. Uh, but most of the time that's just our drinking water is what we use that for. Um, as you can see back here, uh, we have a hot water on demand unit. I have a 15 gallon water tank that's back in there. And then moving over here to this side, um, as you, we've got all the way up towards the front there of storage. So basically everything that's out here, everything fits inside. And then on this side right here behind this door I have two 100 watt gel uh, deep cycle batteries in there. Uh, they're the Renogy versions what I went to. Originally I was running the uh, Walmart deep cycle marine batteries you know with the um, acid in it. They work great except for with all the bouncing because we take this thing off road and it gets airborne and that ran into some issues. Walmart was awesome with their warranty though but now we've moved up to the Renergy ones. <coughs> and then the other nice little thing we have right here is our little icon. Honeymooners Off-Road Adventures. A, a very cool friend of ours made this for us and we love always just showing this thing off and having it up. We turn it on at night and it lights up. You know, it's a pretty cool thing to have along. You always got to have your little nugget. So then over here in the side pocket, I've got a little bit more storage. Um, this is where a lot of my tools and miscellaneous thing goes. We have a couple of USB charging fans that we can put up to move air around. Um, I have my ducting for my diesel heater. Um, and then this is the 2000 watt um, inverter over there. And then the rest of it's just miscellaneous tools and whatnot. Over here, 
I've got in this black container, I have a Chinese diesel heater that I've incorporated inside that and it helps protect it. Uh, I have two of these on here with like a three inch PVC uh, clean outs and then the ducting actually screws into there and then I plumb it up to the rooftop tent. Uh, we've been at negative 20 degrees uh, on the outside and inside we were warm at about 70 degrees where we set the thermostat. There's a thermostat up in the tent that'll maintain temperature. Um, the diesel heater comes with a two gallon tank however option to get this aftermarket four gallon tank and built it into the trailer uh, and, and that actually lasts us about three months pretty easily. It depends on how much we run the diesel heater. And then if you're also probably notice these little black things right here. There's one there and then one over on the other side. Those are actual speakers that are wired into our sound system for here for when we want to play music. Alright, so now backing up. Here we have our, our rooftop tent. Um, it's a Alpha 2, uh, so it's a 2 plus person. I uh, currently have the rain fly off on it. Um, pretty much like to run that way as much as possible because of wind noise, you know, with it flapping and whatnot. And then plus two, it's got skylights in it. So it's nice in the, you know, especially here where it only gets down to 57 degrees at night, you know, it's really cool to have that skylight open and see the stars stuff like that on there uh, we've had three different other tents or two different other tents that we've tried um, the first one we had was a tapui and you know that was a great tent um, the only thing I did not like about it was is that it was a soft shell on the top and in Montana with the cold frigid temperatures it was very hard to do when your fingers are frozen because you couldn't wear your gloves and try to zip uh, and then we moved to the CVT uh, it was like the rugged duty or something like that but it was a very nice tent i loved that tent it was it was great four season kind of tent but the only issue was was the same deal it was the whole soft top thing whereas with this one with the hard top basically when i open this up i pretty much just stand right here by this tire and i can open up this whole tent and set it up this whole tent takes me less than two minutes to set up very nice and easy and then as far as like tear down all i do is push well of course after taking these tether lines off we've had a lot, a lot of high winds and sometimes this will kind of pick up a little bit um, but as far as tear down you just telescope the ladder in push this over you grab the top and bring it down nice and simple and let's see here I guess I can go ahead and open this up so you can get a shot on the inside how long have you been uh, sleeping in this uh, currently we've been living in this tent for almost a year now um, we've been on the road for six months in another couple of weeks. Okay, if you want to go ahead and go upstairs there and have a quick peek inside. So what kind of sleeping bag are we looking at and what's this uh, we, white stuff underneath? So we moved to the Kelsey two-person uh, 20 degree sleeping bag and it's actually been warmer than our zero degree Cabela's bag which that really seems weird in one aspect but the nice thing with the Kelsey bag is it actually has a sides on it from the zipper where it sits up so it allows your body heat to transfer throughout the sleeping bag. Of course the traditional sleeping bag does not do that. So the Kelty is really a good dual person sleeping bag. Right. For... Yep, that's been the best one we found. And then as far as the mattress, as you can see there, we've added a, a three inch memory foam on top of that. I have back issues and shoulder issues and hip issues. And I sleep better than that than I ever did inside my house. So another thing it, that it does come with is if I'm trying to zoom out here, the two inch on top of it. And then we also got the, if you can kind of see, there we go. Um, Conversation condensation mat that we paid a little extra for and it's really kept everything from molding inside. All right, taking you down. So the other thing with the uh, diesel heater too that's also nice that we've learned is that, you know, initially we started off with a buddy heater and, you know, it's just a, you screw in a little propane bottle into it and it, you know, does a radiant heat kind of deal. 
but it would add a lot of moisture inside the tent so we had issues with heavy moisture in there and so with the diesel heater it actually sucks air from the outside heats it up with a heat exchanger and then pumps it in and then of course there's venting on top of the tent so it all goes out so it keeps the tent inside nice and dry we haven't had an issue with mold at all actually since we've started doing that and that's been a pretty huge blessing so the next thing is, is this little pop-up tent that my wife sold me on um, it's actually our bathroom uh, or you can also use it for a shower um, it's just one of those wired frame twist down kind of thing so it takes less than a minute to pop it up and then of course there's a stake down uh, one of the things that we've learned as you probably saw on the other side and you can see right here is to make sure that you attach this to something solid because out in the desert you can get some pretty high winds we've had some 60 plus mile an hour winds and if it wasn't for this thing being attached it would have been gone so that thing also is an extra tall one isn't yeah, it? yeah this one here is a little bit different we had one other one that was a little bit shorter a little bit narrower um, I didn't like it and it was cheaply built. Uh, we did find that after some reviews, this green elephant uh, tent is was highly rated and I can see why. We've definitely been impressed. We've had some pretty good wind with it and it's a little bigger. You know, I like to wear my hat and for instance, in that other one, my hat would hit on the sides and whatnot when I'm trying to move around in there. So let's open this up. I'll give you a quick little snapshot. Uh, so we utilize a five gallon bucket. Uh, we do have a lid thing on it. Oops, if it pops. All right, if I open it up the right way, see we got a little quiet. Thing. So basically what we do is, is a makeshift wag bag system. So we have these uh, eight gallon bags that we line it first and then we put the seat on it. We do our business, toilet paper. Um, and then after we're done, we put a little bit of kitty litter on the top. We pull the bag out, we put a knot in it, and then we utilize the Ziploc bags that we put that in and then it goes into the trash. And then of course we have a nice little container here for our wet wipes to clean our hands afterwards. It's a pretty awesome little tent. Um, if I recall right, I think this thing was like 60 to 80 bucks and it's worth every penny. Alright, so here we are back to the front again. Uh, so that's basically the trailer. So now on the Jeep, uh, I built a door system within it. So I got basically four drawers. So like these two sides over here is the kitchen. So we have some dry goods in here. Um, in here we've got uh, pots and pans and some more dry goods there. On this side over here, I've got all my tools for the Jeep and a few miscellaneous parts. And then up here I have a few miscellaneous parts and first aid and, and um, some cold weather jackets and things like that that I just need to grab quickly or easily. The other thing that we've recently added, and I'm going to do a, a separate video on these a little bit, are these portable solar panels. Um, definitely bang for the buck, way to go if you need some extra stuff. I mean, basically the way our stuff is set up now, you know, with working remotely and all of our electronics for doing video stuff, we make way more power now than we could ever use, even it, when it's cloudy out. Um, if you can also take a look at the top there, we do have two, I call them the baby connexes, and that's more of a long-term storage. Um, so we got miscellaneous stuff for our nonprofit Homework for Heroes stuff stored up in there. Uh, we got some cold weather gears, things like that, that, stuff that we don't have to grab every day is up there. We also have a wee boost up there too, don't we? Yeah, but that's a whole different thing. I was just <laughs> talking about the overland kit. Um, and then on the sides, perspectively, so like this side here is my side because I'm the driver. Laura's side's on the other side. So this here is where all of our clothes are, are stored. Um, kind of open it up here. So if, as you can see, we have a aromatic cedar on it. And the reason why we did the aromatic cedar on it is for multiple reasons. Uh, for one, 
is that it helps keep the clothes smelling fresh. And two is that insects do not like it. So all of the bugs stay out of our clothes, which is very nice. So we each have the three doors on that. And that's basically what we have for our overland stuff. Oh yeah, I guess you, yeah, she's pointing to this. I forgot about that. So this here um, is something I haven't used very much. So we basically have a 15 gallon fixed tank in our overland trailer. We have a five gallon uh, jug that can also filter water. But I also, since I had a little side thing here because of the fender, I put in another water storage in here so I can hold actually another four gallons of water right there if I need to put it in there. You know, like if we're gonna be out in the desert for a month or whatever, you know, we have plenty of water. And that's all I really have for our quick little walk around on that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. I'll put a couple of links in there for you, you know, for ShiftPod for one, because ShiftPod is an excellent product. Um, it is a little expensive, but they do give first responders and uh, veteran discounts on that. And then eventually I'll do a uh, review on those solar panels too, and I'll put that link below. Thank you.